Okay, so water is basically boiled, ready to start making some noodles. Um, yeah, so basically there was a bear that ran across the parking lot, went into the woods over there. Uh, do I feel secure sleeping here tonight? I guess if I'm inside my car, I should be fine. Um, let's hope bears don't start learning how to pick locks. Good morning and happy May long weekend. It's time for another road trip. So this time we're going to start in Edmonton. We'll go to Lake Louise and we're going to do some car camping uh, for two nights. So first night I'll be on my own. And then on the second night, John's going to come and join me. For today's trip, the fastest charger we're going to encounter are 50 kilowatt DC fast chargers. So for the Kona, as long as the battery has a battery min of 15 degrees or above, we can fully use the charging speed of a 50 kilowatt charger. Since we're already at 17 degrees, I think we won't have any cold gating today. So our first stop is Edson, which is about 200 kilometers um, west of Edmonton. Let's get started. Welcome to Edson. Those of you who have been following our channel know about this place. Um, I've been here quite a few times on my way to Jasper. So in between Edmonton and Jasper, this is the only place with DC fast chargers. Now, fortunately, Edson has a lot of DC fast chargers. Let me just give you a little tour. So for the non Tesla people, the uninitiated, the unprivileged ones, uh, we got two flow 50 kilowatt chargers. And then, over here, for the initiated, privileged people based in Elon's everlasting light, um, we've got six superchargers. These are 250 kilowatt um, V3, so very good for Teslas. Now, additionally, there are two uh, other flow 50 kilowatt chargers at the Canadian Tire here in Edson. So this whole place can charge uh, four non-Teslas and six Teslas at the same time. So Edson is actually a really good spot for charging. So we have arrived in Edson with 48% battery. Um, the consumption is 5.8 kilometers per kilowatt hour. That is equivalent to 17.2 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And um, in terms of battery temperature, we're pretty good. We are at 20 degrees for battery minimum. And uh, given that this is only a 50 kilowatt charger, as long as the battery min is above 15 degrees, um, the charging speed is really good. So we are charging at, let's see what we're at here. Uh, 47, yes, 47 kilowatts. So 50 kilowatt charger, 47 kilowatts is basically as much as this charger can give at this point. Look who decided to come and keep me company. It is an Ionic 5. This is a all wheel drive version. Um, the owner said he's had this vehicle for a couple of months since February of 2022. And yeah, you know, if this vehicle was available back then in 2019 when I got the Kona, I would have picked this one. But hey, um, you know, every year there's something better coming along. So there's the Ionic 5. Looks like the Ionic 5 only needed a little bit of juice. 
um, yeah, so I only have five left. I'm still here for maybe another, I don't know, five minutes or so. I'm gonna charge up to 80% so that I don't have to charge too much once I get to Jasper because our destination isn't Jasper, our destination is Lake Louise. But anyway, there is something interesting about these chargers, if you could say that. Um, basically what it is, is on the Flow app, it does show that one of the chargers, this one, is a 50 kilowatt charger, as it should be. And this one is limited to 37 kilowatts. So when the Ionic 5 was charging here, I actually confirmed that this does only top out at 37 kilowatts. Now, this couldn't have been a hardware limiting issue because, look, you got six supercharger stalls. Why, why you got to limit speed on these poor, measly 50 kilowatt chargers? And this wasn't the first time I, I've seen this. When I went to Jasper in the middle of winter time, uh, we were super cold, minus 25 degrees. The three flow chargers, just like these ones in Jasper, were all limited to 37 kilowatts. Now, if anyone knows why this is happening with these chargers, uh, please put it in the comments because I'm sure everybody here would like to know why the charging speed is limited to 37 kilowatts. Okay, so we're basically done charging. Uh, we should have stopped at 80%, it's now at 81. But anyway, the battery is at 81% and it is very toasty. The battery max is actually 30 degrees. Now this is not quite enough for the battery cooling to turn on because I think battery cooling turns on at around 37 degrees, I think. But anyway, the Ionic 5 just left a couple minutes ago and um, he's going to Jasper as well. So let's see if we can meet the Ionic 5 in Jasper. All right, so we have left Edson behind. Um, it's about 20 kilometers ago. Uh, yeah, so finished charging at 82% and uh, charge a lot more than I need. And, and here's why. So I charge more in Edson so that I don't have to spend as much time in Jasper. Right now it is the May long weekend and Jasper is going to be busy. So I topped up a lot in Edson just in case Jasper gets busy and uh, Charger gets occupied or blocked or whatever. So in this way, I minimize risk in Jasper by charging more in Edson. All right, so we're at the charging station here. Let's see. I do see there is at least one spot that's available. So let's plug in the charge. All right, here we are. One spot. All right, we are charging and I'm happy that uh, there is one spot available for me because the other two flow chargers are occupied. So that's all good. We're plugged in, we're charging and we arrived with 47% in the battery. The battery's still pretty hot. The battery max is at 28 degrees. So I think this charging session might give us some uh, battery cooling action happening. So we'll see. Um, the consumption is 6.5 kilometers per kilowatt hour and that translates to 15. Point Two, I think, or 15.4 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So we're gonna charge here for maybe 30 minutes. Um, I do have to eat some food. And uh, yeah, we'll let you know when we're done charging. Take a look at this. This is Jasper, and this is the view. All the majesty of the Rocky Mountains. Oh, where did the Kona go? There it is. 
All right, so we got a Kona here. We got a Porsche Taycan there. And we just have a Kona that's leaving. So in total, uh, three flow 50 kilowatt chargers. Um, I'm getting 50 kilowatts on it, so that looks good. That's promising. Because remember I said in the winter time when I came here, it was locked at 37 kilowatts, so that's good. Let's take a tour at the more privileged side of things. Let's take a look at all the Teslas. Um, yeah, so eight superchargers. You know, something I really wish would happen is that Tesla would open up the superchargers to other EVs. In fact, that's already happened in some places in Europe. Well, it's simply for them because Teslas and other EVs use the same plugs in Europe, whereas here in North America, Tesla uses their proprietary plugs. Actually, uh, John and I did a podcast episode on, you know, Elon Musk announcing that maybe in North America they'll open up superchargers to everyone. Um, yeah, make sure you click that video if you want to see that. We are making our way through the town of Jasper. As you can see, it's quite busy and no surprise, it's a long weekend, so expecting lots of people here. Um, I'm happy I was able to get a spot and just as I finished charging there was a Chevy Bolt that was waiting to uh, plug in so it worked out for everybody. Um, I charged there again for a little bit too long because I, I had to find some time to eat. Um, <laughs> haven't really eaten anything since breakfast uh, because you know I gotta film, I gotta do everything so. Um, I had to shove a sandwich in my face and then and then head off. So we charged to 86% battery, which is a lot more than I need to get to Lake Louise. Um, the battery temperature did get fairly hot again. Uh, battery max is at 36 degrees and then battery min is at 30. Um, the uh, battery cooling haven't turned on. And like I said, I think it's 37 degrees where it would actually turn on. Before we make it all the way to Lake Louise, I would like to stop at Saskatchewan River Crossing. So this is a place that is in between Jasper and Lake Louise, right on Highway 93. Um, this particular place is uh, interesting and significant because during the summer month it's open. And while it's open, it does have two level two chargers. So, uh, for anyone going through Highway 93 in the summertime, it will be possible to, uh, to charge there. We are coming up on Saskatchewan River Crossing. Um, let's update you on some of the status. So we are at 55% battery and the consumption is 7.1 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is also equivalent to 14.1 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So the uh, battery has uh, cooled down a little bit, not by a lot. Battery min is 23, battery max is 29 degrees Celsius. Um, so what we're looking at here at the Saskatchewan River Crossing is uh, whether or not the level two chargers are working. Um, I think they should be by this point. So this area also has a gas station, a store, restaurant, as well as a hotel and it's a good place for a bathroom break or a meal. So let's go in and see if we can use those level two chargers. All right, here we are. All right, 
right, before you is the gas station. We're not gonna need that. Pretty obvious. Um, the charging station is here. I do see there's a Model 3 plugged into one of them. That means I can take a look at the other one. Hello, fellow EV. Okay, so Kona meet Model 3, Model 3 meet Kona. All right, here is the uh, level 2 charger. Looks like it does have power, so let's see if it works. Yeah, even this time of year, we have to contend with bugs on the front of the vehicle. Okay, here is the plug. Let's get the cable. Should be long enough. Okay, so let's see if this works. All right, it's blinking green. That means it works. Let me show you something interesting. Now, do you see the charging speed? It is basically 3.0 or 3.1 kilowatts. Normally, this charger provides um, around 6 kilowatts. And why is that? Well, there's a very simple answer. Um, this specific charger is uh, basically doing what is known as power splitting. So as you can see, I'm plugged in here and uh, Model 3 is plugged in over there. Um, pretty sure the two chargers share a six kilowatt power source and uh, if both are charging at the same time then you get three kilowatts each so if you're planning on charging here for longer periods of time just uh, know that if two vehicles are charging then you are splitting power this is the site at saskatchewan river crossing so there's the highway highway 93 and we got quite the beautiful mountain views around here. And this building is the gift shop, dining room, grocery, and cafeteria area. And there are also washrooms in there. So you got your food and gifts and number one, number two taken care of. And the Kona is right over there beside the Model 3. We have arrived at the uh, Lake Louise Village and uh, we're about to enter this parking lot which has the Tesla destination chargers. So let's see if they are available. I mean there are four, four plugs in total so I hope not all of them are occupied and I can get one of those. Um, but hey, it's a long weekend, could be busy. Oh actually there's no one on those plugs, okay. Well, then I will help myself to one of them. Uh, oh, so many choices. Which one? Let's, let's take this one. Right in the center. There we go. Welcome to Lake Louise. And this is where I will be calling home for the next two nights. And uh, as you can see, there are four plugs in total 
those two are J1772, which are meant for all non-Tesla EVs. And these two are Tesla plugs. And as the name will suggest, uh, these are meant for Teslas. Now I do have a adapter which allows me to use one of these with my vehicle. So I can use any one of them, but there's no one else here. So I'm just on my own. I'm gonna use this one. Uh, let's go through some of the numbers for the last leg of our journey today. Um, from Saskatchewan River Crossing to here, it's about 80 kilometers. We came here with 39% battery. The consumption was 7.4 uh, kilometers per kilowatt hour. That translates to 13.5 kilowatt hour per uh, 100 kilometers. So that's really good consumption. And uh, something I did notice was in Highway 93, so right within the mountains, the temperature is actually pretty cold. There were places that had ambient temperature of 4 degrees, whereas out here it's about 12. So yeah, in the mountains it's a little bit cold, but even then, we still have pretty good consumption. So what's the next step here? Um, it is, let's see, it is 6.45, as I expected. And it's time to cook dinner. We are going to cook dinner using uh, this. So, what's for dinner? Uh, well, it's uh, cup noodles. And to make cup noodle, I need hot water. So, I got regular water here. And I uh, have a kettle here. So, let's fill up the kettle, shall we? All right, looks like that's enough for a cup noodle and some tea. Let's get on to boiling. So this is what I have set up here. Um, I knew this location has 120 volt outlets. So I've set up a little platform and I'm gonna be boiling some water. So let's do that. We have boiled water and we have cup noodles. This one is uh, seafood flavored. Pretty sure there's not gonna be any real seafood in there, just uh, some kind of flavoring. Well, after all that work, the noodle is ready. Let's have some dinner. All right, dinner is done. And uh, I went ahead and flossed and brushed my teeth as well. Um, so, as you can see, the back of the Kona is uh, a little bit packed. It's not, it's not super packed. So let me show you how I'm gonna move things around and rearrange things so that this is ready for camping, AKA turning a car into a mini hotel. A few moments later. After some extensive rearranging, you can see that the entire trunk area has been cleared and everything has been rearranged around the vehicle. Um, the most valuable area, I think, for uh, moving things around is this gap between the first and second row seats. Of course, cooler goes here. This is just, uh, you know, put it up against the wheel so that when the door closes, it doesn't hit the door. And uh, next thing to do is to pump up the air mattress. Okay, let's pump this up. This particular air mattress comes with a self-inflating pump uh, built in the mattress, um, but it requires a lot of pumping. So here we go. it's been successfully inflated so I did uh, flip it around just because this end can bend a little bit and when I close the uh, when I close the hatch um, this will actually fold up and it will fit exactly inside the back of the vehicle so let's get everything ready and let's get ready to sleep all right so I am in I'm ready to sleep um, let me show you the uh, final preparations here. So I've kept the climate control 
at uh, 20 degrees and it's on auto. That seems to be a comfortable temperature for me. And I have locked the doors so the bears can't get in. All right. All right, I'm gonna get some sleep and uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning.